The funeral mass for Catherine Drexel was held here at the Cathedral Basilica, just like her beloved father's and her stepmother's had been. And the pews were packed. At her funeral, there was even the, the bishop who preached and said, well, someday she'll be a saint. With hundreds of nuns ministering in schools and parishes across the country, the impact of her life's work is immeasurable. Oh, thousands, thousands. I mean, it goes on and on, the list of benefactors. Cardinal John Kroll officially opened the cause for her canonization in 1964 after the archdiocese proved to Rome that Mother Catherine had what is considered a cult. Cult doesn't mean anything for that. In the Catholic faith, it simply means that there's a sense that Catherine was so remarkably holy in the way she lived her life that she is, in fact, a saint in heaven. So they begin to ask her, favors. They praise God through her. That's what the family of Bob Gutherman did. They were praying the pain would go away, or at least I'd be able to tolerate the pain. The Bucks County man grew up near the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament. When he was 14 years old, he suffered a devastating ear infection. Two of the bones in my right ear were completely destroyed by this infection. There was nerve damage, there was tissue damage. Damage his doctors insisted could not be repaired. That I would never again hear out of my right ear. So his family began praying to Mother Catherine for a cure. I come from a very big family. I'm one of 11 children. The main focus around our house growing up was you had to be home for dinner. And you didn't get up from the dinner table until after the rosary is said. His doctor soon discovered that Guthrie's body was healing itself. He said, if this body keeps progressing the way it is, he said, I'll never have to touch this boy again, and he never did. The church spent 14 years investigating, trying to rule out any medical explanation. I will get a phone call, go see this doctor, go see, get this test done. We weren't allowed to talk about it. Then, in 1988, Guthrman got a call saying Rome had approved the miracle. At that point, I was 28 years old. Now I'm on the six o'clock news. <laughs> and Catherine Drexel would be beatified at the Vatican. The beatification was an amazing thing because it happened so quickly. No one expected it, and all of a sudden it was happening to us. She was now just one miracle away from becoming a saint, and that second miracle would also come from Bucks County. Amy Wall. And again, she was a miracle hearing. She uh, was profoundly deaf. When the toddler's family heard that Bob Gutherman's hearing was miraculously restored, they started praying to Mother Catherine to also heal their daughter. And all of a sudden, she started to hear. Mother Catherine became St. Catherine on a rainy October 1st, 2000 in St. Peter's Square. We all went to Rome and it was so packed. You saw nothing but different colors of umbrellas. And I think that's such a beautiful picture. It's uniting us all. And then when the Pope announced her name, the skies just cleared. She chose to give not just her fortune, but her whole life. It was the most memorable thing that's ever happened to my life. It was almost like you were in a dream. It was like, this is really happening, that our founders, St. Catherine, is a saint. The canonization was the culmination of something really quite magical in that her life had touched so many people. She didn't see rich people and poor people. She saw the totality of God's child and all. And while it's hard to say why both of her miracles involved hearing, there are some theories. Catherine Drexel's message, I believe, was one of listening. We're supposed to be hearing the cries of those in need around us all the time and just be open to great possibilities of what can be done. And it's hoped that her life story will serve as a message of hope and inspiration. That we can all live like St. Catherine and work to make a world a more accepting and loving place. When 